jump in. They are too quick. This is game two of the 2023 July Beginner Attack Tournament between uh, Cap88 and Alexris in the semifinals. And I'm joined in the commentary booth by both Tones and Evotion. Hello, hello. Much more sensible opening this time. What a shame. Yeah, we did get... <laughs> hold on, I need to go back. Because they're, they're so fast, they don't wait for me. These people don't understand that I need time. Uh, let's see. We saw Knight's oh, opening. And then sort of a center control from Black. I like Black's opening here, to be honest. I think it's really strong. Um, I think this is like a mainline... Uh, like, if you go into the openings database... This is one of the most like commonly, or not not necessarily the most commonly, but one of the most like sound ways to play against this opening from white. Interesting, I didn't know that. I need to look at that more that. often. That is actually a new feature of uh, PTN Ninja as of um, just a, like a week ago, I think. Uh, they added yeah, it's such in a new the resource. openings database. Really cool, really cool thing. I need to figure out how best to utilize it myself, but. Uh, Wow, these guys are playing quick, too. Both both solidly above that 15-minute start mark. Yeah. They're playing with the right time controls, right? 15, 10? Yeah, they are. Black looks to be in a pretty good spot here. Um, but honestly, White's not too bad either. I'd, I'd say they're both fairly even. I would give White a, a Black a slight advantage just because of... Black's position blocking White's capstone out. Yeah, I kind of like... Uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty even here. I was going to say I like White, but I thought maybe White should have played E4 instead of E2. But that's more of a... That's that's such a minor preference thing. I, I actually um, like the, yeah, the E2 because it, it cuts off and also is offensive. So I, I like the defensive-offensive combo move. It does get your stuff in the mix, but Black had momentum, so I feel like that was necessary. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah, such a minor difference. Both players have been, for sure. been pretty solid so far. These two guys specifically, Alexis played uh, in a beginner tournament in the past and did really, really well. And I, I say that even though he didn't get out of the group stage, he played really, really well in that group stage. Um, and I had him pegged to win. And then he comes into this semifinals undefeated. He won every single game. Um, Cap88 has, for the past couple months, been playing a lot of games. And if you spend any time in the Discord and see the Analyzing Game channel, you have seen his name pop up a thousand times uh, because he analyzes every game he plays against all the bots and uh, really dives into why he's winning, why he's losing, that sort of thing. So he knows what he's doing, and he's he's taking uh, taking the game seriously, studying his games, a lot like Aliano 2 did when he started playing, and we all know how that ended up. <laughs> that, that scares me a little bit. I guess I should be waiting for Alexis to be winning these games then. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely noticed that too. Cap88's been making great use of the uh, analysis tools, and, you know, and if you look at the games, I think I took a I took a brief look before this stream, but he's been playing a lot against some of the harder bots like uh, Tactician. Yep. So it, he's definitely and Tactician like, is a bot that deliberately trying to improve. Yeah, a Tactician and Tiltac are bots that are not easy to beat. I'm pretty sure Cap88 has at least one win against Tactician bot, which is more than I can claim. But I also don't play Tactician bot because it's not fun for me. I like to have a chance at winning. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm, I'm not robotic enough to win against those bots. Yeah, to beat the bot, you gotta be the bot. Yep. I... Okay, so now they're, they're taking a bit more time here. They, they blitzed are. out the first, like, ten moves, and now they're in a pretty even position. Though and... I will say I don't like that C1 move from White. I think should have been uh, E4. I think E4, B4, either one. Yeah, it can't go wrong with more center control. Now I'd say F1 left, but he doesn't make the F1 left. I felt like F1 left was, was the obvious move there. Well, now it's time for a wall. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was a, a quality three here. But if you don't they, they, wall here, oh. what's the play? They keep going for these like long thinks and then playing a couple really fast moves in a row. So like that, there was a really fast exchange where they all, you know, they had that little capture war and now they're placing a wall. But maybe they should have stopped, in my opinion, to think a bit before like deciding if that was the optimal response to continue mm -hmm. the capture war. Yeah. Okay. Now we get the wall. If the wall comes and left, red running away. What the, do you if think? the wall comes left, that's great for white because black can't smash it because the the cat's oh, pinned. Right. But now white plays at d4. D4 feels like the play here, and then you come down with with 2d3 afterwards because black's going to come right with um with b2 or something so i feel like d4 is is like the um the best play here it does go for the d4 quick cap uh quick tack threat uh, now it's absolutely 2d3 minus because 2d3 minus Which is now attack threat, is threat and also threatening the huge stack on e2 like that that feels like a no-brainer basically this is not this looking good for Alexis. maybe it has to be something like 2c3 minus bringing the capstone down Now, do you just play at d1 here as white? Yeah, that's got to be it. Because then your only defense as black is to move that capstone to the right. And then white might fill or might move the wall stack. Probably Almost moves the wall stack, not, not filling wall stack, yeah. Yep, Only there's 18 the D1. Moves in. What a strange game so far. First yeah. half of the game was pretty solid by both players, and this last half of the game has been a little shaky. For sure. Oh, totally missed the threat. Cap 88 wins game two. Wow. Wow. That was surprising. How did both wow. of these games seem to mirror my match <laughs> against not a werewolf? <laughs> Long, That's longer, drawn out more detailed first game and then relatively quick end to the second and cap 88 yeah, won well, both of those games right well played by both players yeah he, he did, he did. Win both. that yeah. that was surprising because i expected alexis to win this one honestly because how he came in so strong winning every game in his group stage but cap 88 definitely showing wow. that he has been playing some strong tech and analyzing those games and that's that's been working for him that was very quick play I think Alexis kind of got into a uh, got into a sort of a, a trap for himself in the second game, and just could not find his way out of it. And I think that was his downfall. Yeah, and I think we we had a lot to say about their you know a lot to commentate about their moves, but I think overall both of these players, just like our last match, were playing pretty strong. Yeah, I think that we're gonna see. From these both of these guys, I think we're going to see some strong play in the future from both of them. I think that... Uh... Oh, no, they're both from Germany. Yeah, the Transatlantic tournament is going to work against us, guys. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> these guys are both on the European side. We're... <laughs> For those of you not uh, aware, the Transatlantic tournament is where uh, there's a one game from... Uh... It's, it's, a, it's sort of a tournament... But it's basically uh, players from America play against players from, like, Europe. Essentially, it's kind of like the Ryder Cup in golf. And uh, one team wins, and Europe always wins. <laughs> so, um, more, more great European players. Great. Great. This 
just uh, it's always going to work out great for us. Anyway, um, that was the, some fun games. We got to see some good play from these guys, some strategic thinking, some, uh, some tactical thinking, and uh, yeah, just some fun tech. And thanks to Tones and Evotion for joining me in this uh, little commentary booth. Yes. Good fun time. Happy to be here. And that yeah. is all for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description below for all things TAC, especially the TAC Discord server, which is where you can find all sorts of TAC resources like strategy guides and people to play with, whether that be right here on playtac.com or asynchronously in the Discord server itself. Lots and lots of great resources and people to play with, including any of the three of us. You might be able to find a game with us and, uh, and play on there. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, have a great day and happy tacking.